Hi, this is Steve McQuaid for FutureTrackRunning.com, and welcome to part one of our video blog called Shoe Science. Uh, the purpose of this blog is to discuss technology and science behind performance running uh, footwear, apparel, and accessories. In this episode of Shoe Science, we'll be discussing shoe componentry, or the basic elements that make up your standard performance running shoe. We're going to start at the top with the upper and work our way down to the outsole, explaining common characteristics you'll find in any brand of performance running shoe. Okay, so to start, we're going to talk about the upper of the shoe, which is the cloth portion on top that hugs your foot to the rest of the shoe. It's typically comprised of an open mesh for breathability, and uh, it's typically made of a, a dry wicking material, something that'll pull sweat away from your foot, keeping it drier and cooler. You'll also find synthetic overlays, which add a bit of structure and support to the upper. But the most important portion of the upper is the lacing system. The lacing system allows for complete customization of the fit. If your heel's slipping out, the lacing can fix it. If you feel pressure on your instep, lacing can fix it. If you need a little bit more space in the forefoot, there are ways to relace the shoes to accommodate that. Moving up, uh, let's talk a little bit about the portion of the shoe that wraps around your ankle. This is commonly referred to as the collar of the shoe. A lot of brands nowadays are putting a memory foam along the collar, um, which works kind of like a Tempur-Pedic material. Over time, it compresses and molds to the shape of your foot for a more customized fit. All right, the next part of the shoe that we're going to talk about is the sock liner, better known as the insole. Now, the sock liner, this is pretty typical. Uh, it's made of like a foam material um, contoured through the arch, um, but really it doesn't enhance the performance of the shoe at all. It doesn't increase cushioning or stability. Um, its main purpose actually is to cover the seams along the inside of the shoe so that you don't get um, irritation, blistering uh, along that seam. Pretty simple. Okay, the next component of the shoe we're going to talk about is the midsole, and this is the most complex component of a running shoe. Um, it houses the cushioning and stabilizing properties. Um, first part we're going to talk about is just the plain white foam. Uh, in most brands they use what's called an EVA foam. It's an open cell foam that compresses and decompresses uh, pretty equally, so you get basically a good dur uh, durability out of, out of the foam. Um, this section here, uh, this red section, is called the crash pad. And they call it that because it's the first point of contact that your foot will have with the ground. Um, they use a even more blown version of EVA in that area that's a little bit softer. That'll uh, absorb the shock better, but also slow the rate at which your foot pronates or collapses to the inside. So that's the uh, the crash pad there. While we're talking about pronation, let's talk about a stability system. Uh, this gray area on the inside is a double density foam, so essentially it's twice as dense as the white foam. And what happens is uh, as you put your weight down on the shoe, your foot will sink into the soft white foam. This won't compress at the same rate, so essentially it's going to hold up that arch and prevent it from collapsing. That's important for about 80% of the population um, as they need a certain amount of pronation control um, because of their flexible foot type. Um, the midsole is also responsible for the cushioning system. So I'm going to ruin probably millions of dollars, millions of marketing dollars spent by uh, the companies we, we carry. EVA foam is responsible for about 75% of cushioning. Um, the cushioning materials that each brand use, use uh, is they're unique. Um, so Nike uses Air, Asics uses Gel, Brooks is Hydroflow, Adidas, Adaprene, and on and on. Everyone's got a different name. It's a different compound. But really when you go down to it and you look at the research, they're all equally as effective at attenuating or absorbing the shock. Um, so whether you go with Air, you go with Gel, is going to be a preference to you, uh, whatever feels better, feels more natural. Some people like the, the springiness of a gel compound while others like the really squishiness of uh, a foam compound. So it's just unique and it's dependent on your preference. Um, and the last thing we're going to talk about is this plastic insert. It's, it's a TPU plastic they put through the midfoot. 
Um, it's called a shank. They call it a midfoot shank. Um, its purpose is to make the midfoot of the shoe more rigid. Um, so it's not going to flex through there. It's going to cut down on the torsional flexibility. Um, it's really its main purpose is again to stabilize an overly flexible foot by just propping it up and making it more rigid. So in turn that'll that'll uh, support and neutralize pronation. All right, the final component we're going to talk about is what's called the outsole of the shoe, and it's the rubber portion that is in contact with ground. Um, most road running shoes, you're going to find uh, they use a blown rubber compound in the forefoot, which is a little bit softer. It's going to feel uh, more springy on the on the ground, and they use a carbon rubber in the heel. Um, it's a denser rubber. It's going to be more durable, um, and that's why they put it back here. Is the first point of impact? It's going to have the most friction, um, so you want to use a more durable rubber um, in that impact area. What you'll find on a trail shoe is they use a carbon rubber in the full outsole, uh, which will give it a little bit of added traction um, and increased durability on a, a more aggressive uh, off-road surface. Um, <clears throat> another thing I want to talk about are all these grooves you see along the shoe. Um, in the forefoot, they're called flex grooves. In the heel, uh, they call it decoupling. And the main purpose of decoupling is um, essentially the, all of these pieces work independently. It's like an independent suspension. So when you hit the ground, um, this is going to give a little bit, um, which is, again, going to slow the rate of the, the foot collapsing to the inside or pronating. Um, you're going to see this a lot nowadays. Uh, pretty much every brand is doing it. And not only are they doing it, but they're doing it differently for men versus women. So they have gender-specific decoupling in the heel um, because men and women aren't built the same. You know, we've got different mechanics, women have wider hips, a different angle that they come down, um, different angle of impact. So uh, decoupling in the heel is a new technology, well, relatively new, um, and uh, it's in most brands. So that's a good thing to, to note. Um, you'll see this lateral, I'm mean, sorry, vertical flex groove there is again designed upon impact to slow the rate that the shoe pronates um, just by giving a little bit laterally. Um, and then you'll get these horizontal flex grooves that are designed to match the uh, natural flex of your foot, um, the toes, and joints. Um, so, all right, well, that does it for shoe science part one, shoe componentry. Hope you learned something. Uh, hope it was engaging. Anyway, uh, in future episodes, we plan on covering other technical aspects of running uh, and running products. Uh, pronation versus supination, for example, uh, comparing insole types, we can do technical fabrics of apparel, and the list goes on and on and on. Um, if there's a topic you'd like to have us cover, please leave it in the comments section of our blog, or Facebook, or YouTube, or your social media platform of choice. Um, you can find the links on our homepage or any other page of our website. Uh, and yes, so I hope you tune in next time, and uh, we look forward to doing more of these.